And here we are, guys, with round eight. Round eight of my um, most recent tournament. I'm playing International Master Oladapu. I do with the white pieces, right? So here, I'm trying to win. And I'm like, yo, all I need is to win this game. And then if I can win or draw the last round, um, then I can get a norm, right? So uh, I'm playing white in this game, right? So I'm playing Oladapu, right? And here we go. I go E4. I know he's going to play C5 from based off the prep. He plays, I mean, he plays a bunch of things, C5 and D6. And he also plays a bunch of different Sicilians, actually. So I kind of did a lot of prep on him, or at least as much as I could and covered as many bases as I could. I go Knight of 3. He goes with the E6 uh, Sicilian here, the timing off stuff. Got to E6. Uh, instead of going C3 Sicilian for the kill wise, I just went D4, right? So I went D4. Takes, takes, Knight C6, Knight C3, Queen C7. Okay, this is all, all theory, all theory, all theory. I go bishop e3, he goes a6. And now from this position, chat, it, it's on you here. So, you know, I like to say two questions I like to ask myself. Number one is, um, what would Tao do? What would Grandfather Tao do, right? And number two is, what would Nesmedinov do? Nesmedinov was Tao's trainer. So I always like to say that kind of stuff. I like those type of positions. It's white to move in this position. What would you do? What do you do? Ben Boyo, thanks for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Uh, time enough, nice. Yes, a time enough Sicilian. So it's white to move. What am I going to play? Yulu says D4. Yulu says D4. Hey, what else do we have here, chat? Knight D6? Knight? Uh, D5. Okay, 95. He's going for the early 95 right now. That is very, very common in these type of positions. 95. Bumble B tuna chest. Thanks for the follow. 95 is very common. Tao will bring in more troops. Okay. Kill A20 says. Bishop E2. Very simple development. Queen to D2. This is analysis of a play game. Yeah, this is my game here that I played in round eight of my last tournament. Illuminati. Thanks for the follow. Illuminati 7. Uh oh. Illuminati with the follow. Wow. Bruh. F4. F4. Uh, okay. Pawn F4. Okay. Here we go. In fact, the move here is indeed G4, right? We can hear it up. G4. So G4 is the move here. This is aggressive. This is very aggressive. And it's just like, okay, go ahead. You develop your knight. I'm just going to be super annoying to you. There are a lot of lines here that I can cover and show, but we ain't got time for all of that. That's going to be another day in the video. I'm also not about to give you all the super prep that I be doing. Bruh. So after this G4 move, right? Okay. My man played against Oladapu, who just uh, got an injury. Oh, he did? Huh? What? Oh, I didn't know that. G4. But G4, this G4 move is uh, very annoying, actually, to black. But what does he do? He plays B5, which is theory. This is straight up theory. They go B5 anyway. And then white captures on C6. Now, you can take with the D pawn, but that's kind of strange. After queen goes to F3, you castle queen side. It's just not the greatest for the pawn structure. I also get to the file quickly, but it is a move. In fact, what, the, what happens is the queen takes. So you keep the C file open and not close it, and you can play bishop B4 in many cases. Okay, chat, it's white to move. You see a B4 coming, bishop B4 maybe, all this kind of stuff. Maybe the E4 pawn might be a little loose. What do you do about it? White to move. Oh, okay. I'm like, oh, you know what? And I read that wrong, too. You're talking about a heat reference. Yeah, it's actually spelled wrong, too. The basketball player, I got you. 88 Mike. All right, white to move. It takes on C6. E4 is a little loose. Also, C3. May have some problems here. Bishop G2, Queen F3 anyway. A nice day from Theta and Bishop G2. Hey, Canty and Chat, what up? Big Dark Side, how are you? Look at this game I played in round eight. International Master Oladapu Dapo Adu. He played, um, oh, it's my move. Yeah, he played Queen Take C6. And for me, instead of doing anything about this pawn or the knight, in fact, the theory here just says Queen to D2. You don't care about anything. I'm, I'm good. Big dark side, good to see you too. Queen d2, right? So I go here with the idea of if b4, knight e2, and if queen takes, then rook g1. And I mean, look look at this compensation. Like, are you kidding me? Like, you're, you're not about to get in the way with it. The black's queen looks crazy. There's so much compensation here. This is very, very bad for black. 
very very bad it reminds you almost of like the poison pond variations where y'all yeah, remember uh who was getting a head cracked i mean absolutely destroyed who mvl getting smashed with that poison pond stuff y'all yeah, remember that boy that's exactly what he remind you of like so don't take the little poison pond right so what he does is he plays bishop b4 bishop b4 right so this bishop b4 move puts pressure here and this is something that actually wasn't in my files and the reason for it is because it's not the greatest move actually i was like i, I really haven't faced this I haven't faced this, and I chose castling, but I looked at queen d4. This was an interesting one. I'm hitting both of these, g7 and the bishop. I really looked at this, and I said he's going to have to take, and then takes, and then I saw knight f6. And here, there was a problem here. This gets wild. After g5, queen takes e4, g takes f6, right? But then my rook's hanging. After takes, then I take on g7, rook g8, and then look at this compensation. Like, there's... Bishop switch like the bishops are, are, are crossing the board. I stacked an exchange, but his king's in the center, but his dark squares are weak. But I mean, like, this is a crazy position. But I will play this all day long. All day long, I'm playing this position for white. But um, I actually didn't go for this. And actually, I thought something was wrong. Like, for some reason, I thought they could take with the knight. And then I saw this, and I missed that I could actually do that. Like, if this happens, I mean, look how much is here, guys. There's so many tactics in that one position that it's kind of insane. But I have this here, so I will be winning in that situation. I kind of missed that uh, in post game analysis, actually. Oh, sorry, not here. And after here, after queen takes, there's a rook f8. And here I go bishop g2. But this is hard to see, obviously, in calculations. It's going through all of this. I wasn't familiar. I haven't actually played this ever. So I didn't go for any of this. What I chose here was actually a simple route of castling, right? And uh, yes, bishop takes c3 can be a thing, and he can damage my structure. But so what? He can't really get to me. It's going to take a while. Sorry. And also, his dark squares are extremely weak. He still needs to develop. I have the G-Pawn already ready to go. I'm just focused on development. This is a crazy, like, type game, right? Uh, especially after Bishop to B4. I'll be in here. What up, John Drew? So, all right, this is what happens. Um, he goes Bishop B4. I castles. He goes Knight F6. And I go F3. To make everything nice and solid, because I kind of had to. He's threatening Knight takes E4. And knight takes g4. So I'm like, all right, whatever, bro. So I go f3. And then he goes d6. a3. Right? So a3 happens. I hit the bishop. Bishop takes c3. B takes c3. This looks like a Yugoslav attacking a dragon. Yeah, exactly, right? It looks like some type of dragon. But he didn't play g6. And then king e7. And then here, this gets kind of strange. In fact, right now, it's completely zeros, believe it or not. Believe it or not, it's all zeros. What's that, uh, Nicholas? It's round eight right here. So, all right, it's white to move chat. What do we do? What can you come up with? And I'll tell you what my idea was and what I was going for here. I actually played number number move number three on the engine here. And I was trying to figure out what to do, and you'll understand after you see what happens. The complicated position, very complicated. G5, 88 Mike says H4. In game favors black, so checkmate the king. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, John got a great point there. 100%. Checkmate the king, my guy. Checkmate the king, because uh, the problems. What about C4 from Kabash? Ooh, C4. Ooh. Ooh, spicy. H4, G5. H4, G5. D6 hangs, right. So, in fact. C4 is a big possibility that I consider for a very long time. That's a move. That right there is a move. Here's what I looked at. In fact, with C4, after pawn takes, the obvious reason is if bishop takes, queen takes, boom, hitting, splitting. Let me get this man off the board. This is a family channel. Bruh. Oh, wow. That's made. That's gross, right? Ooh, that's nice. So, obviously, after bishop takes, what he can do is I don't have to take nothing. In fact, he can go rig d8. Defend d6, and my bishop's kind of hanging. So now, out of nowhere, he's about to tuck and roll with the king. And in fact, in a few moves, it might be me getting made it. So I need to be very careful here, actually, about this, right? I can't... Actually, I even looked at e5 here. But if I ever go e5, right, there's a, there's like a knight d5. And, like, and even right here, he can take here. And believe it or not, he got the little pawn cube, right? He got the little pawn cube stuff, that, or almost pawn cube. But it looks very nice around his king, and it's hard to actually break through here. This is not what I'm looking for from the white side. Not what I'm looking for at all, actually. And so I looked at this line. What about pawn takes? Instead of taking it, I looked at a queen b4. 
maybe like a queen d4 so i can sack the rook and play bishop c5 for instance a, a case of like a6 i have something like bam rook takes d6 and have this i was looking for stuff like this as well right it's very it's it's interesting but c4 just doesn't work right <laughs> funny funny to lift it yeah somebody else said that too so c4 was a big choice of mine i also thought about g5 but i was like i mean he wants to move the knight kind of anyway and then I thought about this is like, what is my overall plan, right? A lot of times it's working backwards or trying to figure out what's the overall plan and trying to break it down in like micro plans. What's the big plan and break it down in micro plans. So the big plan here, uh, Rook D8, Bishop B2. Um, what you said? Bishop B2? What's the plan? C4 takes, takes. Rook D8 and Bishop B2? You're talking about Bishop B3. Yeah, Bishop, I think you're talking about Bishop B3. Or bishop a2 or something. Yeah, moving the bishop, maybe it doesn't matter. Like I can go like rook b8, and if, for right now, I'm actually threatening this. And then if bishop a2, bishop a2, I mean, I guess, what does what black do? Maybe like, uh, even still, rook b8, bishop, like, black gets out. And that's what I'm trying not to allow, is black to get out. So what I thought about here, this is long-term thinking and doing big boy plans, right? Big boy plans here. Watch this, right? I know that c4 doesn't work due to my calculations. I tried e5, that doesn't work. He, his, what's his plan? He wants to do this. He want to run away and tuck his king. Tuck and roll with the king, put the rook on d8. Cool. So if he wants to do that, then I want to make sure that all of this is as loose as possible. There's holes in it so that when you try to go over here, there's a big hole in it, right? There's a big hole in it. When you try to put water in your cup, there's a hole at the bottom of it, right? So this is what I'm trying to do here. So after king e7, I play the move here, h4. <laughs> real hard flex from a real big fella what i'm about to do here is i'm about to open up everything so what he does a bishop b7 he like cool give me the chance to develop i'm gonna take those all day i go h5 because i'm just about to open up shop if you go h6 what i just helps me right so he goes 97 and then i go h6 because i want to open up all the lines over here by your king so by the time you try to get your king safe it's already too late so he goes g6. I hit him with a little checky pool. What it do, right? Because then this pokes holes in the position, forces a concession of the pawn of the knight, or you lose the pawn on d6. So what he does is he plays f6. And then I go bishop f4 to poke another hole here, right? e5. He goes e5. And then I back it up. And then he goes g5. And then I sit here and I say, oh, snap, Bruh. right? What do you do? Well, he made all these holes around the king, but now it's up to you, chat. It's white to move. Looks like, you know, Swiss cheese here or whatever with the holes in his position with the light squares, but we can't activate the bishop yet. Maybe c4 doesn't work. Do we do a rook lift? Like, what do we do? It is white to move, chat. And is it up to you right now? What do you do? Even taking on g5 doesn't lose. Sack the bishop on g5, says Osmo. F4. Ooh, F4, spicy. First, we crack the head on the case that's inside each other. Rook lift feels right. The scene unseen. Okay, so here we go. F4, another one? Okay. Move here is 100%. Bishop takes G5. <laughs> Hit him, split him with a move. Bishop takes G5. Hit him with a move. Yes, sir. That is a move. Yeah, sack it, boss, man. <laughs> sack that boy, big fella. Yes, sir. Bishop takes G5. And we live every single time. Oh, wow. And after bishop takes, hit him, split him, right? So queen takes g5. And here what I calculated is a lot of lines. Now here is actually a draw. And what I looked at here is um, practically the line I looked at, the hardest, one of the crazy ones was this one. This was what I was calculating. If he was able to get away with this. Now here's one thing or two things I ask myself all the time. You already know you can use command relatives in the chat because, you know, my grandfather Tao. I always ask myself right here. I ask myself, what would grandfather Tao do? What would Uncle Nesmadinov do, right? So they would sack. So absolutely, sack first, think later, like Grandfather Tao say. We attacked it, we sacked that boy. Now, if Knight of Six, he went King G8 or King uh, E8. 
But if knight f6, I was looking at this move, queen g7, which automatically wins. Because if there's king e6, I can play g5. Look at this, guys. And then bishop h3. I saw all this in calculations. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Shay, Shay, we're too high for him. Oh, my goodness. Right. I was ready for this, right? So I can play g5. And if the king gets here, you go bishop h3 with this nasty diagonal where the queen's cutting everything off. Right. It's king e6. Okay. Right away. Um, king e6 right away. Actually, that was the next line. After king e6, I was still trying to see if I could get the check off, right? Queen f5 after king e7. I was going to try to see if I can get g5 in. G5. Or check again, right? And then I was here, I got a little lost. I was like, uh, what happens here? I even wanted to try bishop h3 right here, right? Like bishop h3, I mean, this is hard because, like, this is, I mean, you have to be so accurate here as black. So accurate. And the engine just says I should check back and forth. King e6, in fact, is a draw. <laughs> he said, too hasty, removing you from the IM section to the GM section. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't mind, you know what I'm saying? Bruh. I wouldn't mind, you know what I'm saying? What is that, 4-4 four, four norm? Bruh. I don't care. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah, what's up with Big Phil? When the king is supposed to be sacked, needs to be no probably. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, right. So queen f5 check though, right? So queen f5 check uh, would have been that. But he plays um, bishop takes, takes, queen takes. And then he went back, which is a logical way of doing things. I go queen g7 and miraculously, he actually is okay right here. Watch this. After rook f8, this is what he plays. I take on h7. Now who can find the zeros move? Who can find what makes everything zeros here, guys? Now there's actually kind of two no there's like one route really but there's like a zeros route you can go here well, let's see what you can find the best move for black he was not able to find the best move for black as international master here it's extremely hard i mean because i mean look at this position look bro i got two passers my guy i got two of them you know what i mean two passers not one of them two so this is a very scary situation thanks for the follows Free pawn on c3. Gotta be rook f7 or king d8. Rook f7, rook takes f3, queen c3. Okay, so queen c3 actually can lead to some draw like stuff. It can, and I have to be accurate myself. I have to check and play rook d3. And black has to be. So queen c3 is a good move. They're saying it's not the best move. So you can still get you get credit for queen c3. It's a logical move. It doesn't make sense. But he didn't play it. Excuse me. He did not play that. Knight of six. Does not work. All I do is kind of just check and push. And actually, I can play g5 next to and attack the knight. So, and it doesn't have many good squares to go to. So, that's not it either. In fact, the move here that draws, bro, is king to d8. Bro, this is the move that actually draws. Uh, apparently, it's zeros here. I mean, I still don't believe this. Like, I st as a human, as a human, I don't believe this at all. I don't believe for a second, you know, that white is not going bro you got two pass pawns practical chances with the d pawn weak are you kidding me you're telling me that you're gonna draw this Bruh. something's wrong with the hardware in this engine you understand me right now right so it, it, i don't understand <laughs> not you you're, you no it's not it's not it's not a draw it's not right so after after rick f8 i take on h7 white play or black plays actually in fact the losing move rick f7 white to move chat what do we do Rook f7 on the board. It does not work. Rook f7 looks logical. Attacking the queen. Right? Attack the queen. Get the queen up out of there. Right? Get your queen out of my face. Fight to move. What do we do? Just because there's no viable checks for a sustained attack. I know, right? It's crazy, huh? Queen g8 and h7 for survivor knight. Queen g8 from Jalyptic. Queen e6. That's nice. Oh, you're talking about queen g8, queen e6. Okay. A g6. And thanks for following. All right, guys, it's pretty simple, right? Queen g8, easy, easy one. Queen g8, queen g8. He steps up with the king. I go h7. Right here. Here we go. Here we go. I was okay. I was shocked. Okay, I was very shocked. Watch this. First things first. He go rook f8. Bruh. I was like, whoa. Okay, he didn't take it. Didn't expect that. He didn't take it. Cool. So I go in queen. Actually, sorry, I check first. And then I queen. Right. 
Here we go. Now he plays this right here. This is actually second move on the engine, by the way. He plays this right here. Queen takes C3. And I stopped and looked for a second. And I said to myself, wait a second. I can move this queen. I can move my queen. I can move my other queen. Bruh. So, so I did. So I played queen ace two. Bro, I got two queens on the board in the norm tournament. I couldn't believe this. I couldn't believe this. I'm sitting here like, bro, I got two queens on the board right now. I mean, stop. Look at this position, guys. Stop and look at this for a second. Well, let's just sit here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to enjoy my water real quick. Brain fuel, right? Okay, Canty, 15, 15% off, right? It, enjoy this, right? Look at this position. Look at this. Look at this. That's good water. Queen. I got two queens, dude. Bro, this is crazy. I couldn't believe I had two queens. So he takes on a3, and I'm looking at this like, whoa, right? Right? Would it be queen a f6 or queen h if you took on f6? Well, you don't take if you take on any of any of them, it will lead to the same. It's no good because it's only pinning and you lose one. Yeah, grandfather tower will be proud, right? Not one queen. I got two queens, two chains. And two queens, you know what I mean? Like two chains, two queens. That's why this one, in fact, if you saw the thumbnail, when you see the thumbnail on YouTube, shout out to the people watching on YouTube and Twitch, right? So, of course, um, when you see the thumbnail, it's called Two Queen Shorty. That's the name of this one, right? Two Queen Shorty, right? Of course, because like <laughs> two queens in the same game, in one game. And I kept them, right? Watch this. I go King D2. He checks me. I do a little shit, shake and bake, you know? A stick and move, I'm out of there. King E2. He goes Rook C8. He hits me with the little two piece trying to hit me there. I go Rook D2. And then he goes Rook C3. And then here we go. Jedi Russian tactics. It's y'all turn. What y'all do? What you do? Okay, chat. It's on you. It's on you. It's white to move. What do you do? K Vo the four. Thanks for the follow. Two phones. Right. Two phones. Yeah, for the hills, too many queens. Give it back, big belt. <laughs> you got too many queens. <laughs> Give it back. King E1. Okay. King E1. Take the knight. Ooh, Rook takes D6. Queen GX E5. That's crazy. Sack on E5. Guys, here it is. It's crazy. I had to write this on the score sheet. I've never had to write this, so it was strange writing it. Queen G. That means you got two queens. That means you got two queens. Queen G takes E5. Queen G takes E5. And it's mate. It's a mating sequence, guys. Watch this, right? D takes E5, and we live hitting splitting, right? Queen takes E5. King F8, and then he resigned right here. But, right, you should have brought the soundboard to this game. Fact, <laughs> to the game, right? King F8, and then after Rook D8, right? Rook D8 is check, because after 98, Rook takes his mate on the move, right? And we can just show that mate on the movester. And then after uh, King G7, uh, Queen G5, and we live. That's a mate. That's a mate there. It's a beautiful mate with the rook over here that you forgot about on the H file. Right. So it's a mate over here, right? Beautiful mate. Beautiful mate. Beautiful. You're right, Baki, my bad. Family channel. Excuse me. So this was beautiful. I had two queens here. I was able to sack one of them. And it was beautiful again from the beginning if you haven't seen it. Right. This was the game here. Tower reborn today. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely a lot of towel from this game and from this tournament. Um, knight takes. Queen D2, I castle, get out the way, have a nice day. I go F3, I get my pieces active. I just open up the whole king side over here. Sack him! Sack first thing later. And then um, and we just had a nasty conversion here with two queens on the board. Did it matter which queen? In fact, it did matter which queen. That's a great question. The, cra the, re the uh, reason why it mattered is because after this queen takes, this king can run the D7. That's the problem. Right, and this is why that's actually a great question, and that's why I took with this one because if he runs to d7, rook takes now I can take with my queen, and then this I win this way, so it's very good. 
it's good to understand, right? You know, and and, I, and obviously um, calculate if I can take two ways, right? You know, his bishop before it definitely looked weird, didn't it? Didn't it? Wild stuff. Can you go to option after the bishop sack? What happens if he blocks with the knight? That's a great question, fat cat. In fact, let's go back here. We did look at that briefly here, but if he blocks with the knight after queen takes knight f6, that immediately loses to queen g7, which I saw. Oops, sorry, not that move. Obviously, queen g7 is checked, so the knight is hanging. The knight's hanging. If you move the king away from the defense of the knight, then obviously I get my piece back. I mean, even here, actually, in fact, I mean, I just take the rook instead, which is even better. So you have to go king e6, but then I have the diagonal here. So I can immediately, I can go bishop h3 or g5. This is more forcing. The g5 immediately hits the knight with the bishop h3 option. I don't even know how do you even get out of this, right? I have no idea how you're getting out of this here. You've got to be some type of engine Bruh. to figure this out right now. But g5, bishop h3, and this is like gg start a new game, right? So knight f6 is not a move either. So it's very difficult to find the right move. He went king e8, but he couldn't find the rest of it. It was crazy, right? So... Nasty game. Um, I was able to win this game, right? And uh, yeah, guys, that's it. And I lost the last round. It's tough stuff, but uh, half a point away from a uh, from a norm. But um, yeah, this is a nasty game. So hopefully, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Make sure you guys subscribe to the YouTube, and we'll see you guys on the next video.